Okay, as we uh, switch screens, uh, I would like to uh, wish you all a good morning or a good day or a good evening, depending on where you are. And I would like to reiterate that this introduction is aimed at complete beginners of Grasshopper. But we do assume that you know a little bit of Rhino, just in case. So the first question I'm supposed to answer is, what is Grasshopper? And luckily the answer is quite simple. It's programming. In Grasshopper, you design algorithms that then perform actions inside a Rhino environment. Uh, even though there's no text involved, it still means that it's programming. So let's just start off with some uh, nomenclature. To start Grasshopper, you will run the Grasshopper command in the Rhino command line, and this will bring up the Grasshopper window. Uh, as you see, it's a separate window from Rhino, and there's also a separate file format. So if you make stuff here, you have to save it separately through the Grasshopper save and open logic. Uh, with that out of the way, we'll have a look at, at, a bit, at the parts of this window that are important. There's, of course, the menu, which you all know and, and are familiar with. Then there are the tabs, params, mathematics, sets, and so on and so forth. And these contain all the tools which Grasshopper provides for making algorithms. Within each tab, there's a bunch of panels with different names. Uh, if you click on the black bar, it, it'll fold out, and you can actually see all the, all the components in that panel with tooltips and names written down. Down here, we have the canvas, which is where the algorithm is actually made. This is where you work. And I think it's time now to start seeing how this relates to Rhino itself. Uh, I figured we could start with a very simple command in Rhino, namely the line command, and then see how it works if you do the same thing in Grasshopper afterwards. So if I run the line command, uh, first of all, I get a bunch of options here. I have different ways to create lines. I can create lines from surface normal or from four points and so on and so forth. But the default is to specify a start point somewhere and an end point somewhere. And then I get a line segment in, in, in my Rhino file as a result. Uh, as you'll see here, there's actually four events that, that conspired to make this happen. The first one was me typing in the line command. Then I had to pick one point for the start, one point for the end, and the final event was that I actually get a line segment in Rhino. Uh, except for the final event, they're all now gone. They're in the past. We can no longer change or access them. But in Grasshopper, all four things remain live all the time. To make a line in Grasshopper, uh, I would use a line component. And I can find those in the curve tab and the primitive panel. As in Rhino, there are multiple ways to make lines. You can make a line that fits a bunch of, uh, of points, or between two planes, or from four points. But we will use the same one as the one we just used in Rhino, which is line from, from start point to end point. If I click on it, and click on the canvas, we will get a brand new line component. Doing this step is sort of the same as running the line command in Rhino. It, it's now there but I still need to supply start and end points before it actually does something. It's also orange, which is probably its most, its most obvious property here. And if it's orange, it means that there's a warning. In this case, the warning is that there is no input. In fact, I can click on the little warning symbol to see that both input parameter A and B fail to collect data, so they're empty. And as a result, this thing doesn't actually run. It, it, it can't finish making a line segment. Uh, I clicked here in the view, viewport twice to specify the start and end point. And I can do the same here. I can go over the A input parameter, open a menu, and say, set one point. And I can click in Rhino to specify a single grasshopper location as a red cross. Do, do the same for B, open a menu, set one point, click somewhere, and now I have two points and a line between them, which is 
stored in the output parameter of this component. So what we have so far is a component, input parameters, and output parameters. Data always flows from left to right in Grasshopper, so inputs are on the left, outputs are on the right, and then later on we can use those outputs to as inputs for other components downstream. But for now, let's just stick with this one here, one component only. Uh, you will notice that this, that this uh, geometry here, this, this red stuff, it cannot be selected. It doesn't actually exist in Rhino. It's only drawn in the viewport. <clears throat> However, if I select this component, it goes green. So you can see that this component and this geometry belong together. Since I can select these points, uh, I can't move them around like I could with, with the Rhino points. If I switch on the control points, I can take the end point and drag it around. Since this is, is currently not possible, it seems a bit limited. So instead of just picking points as coordinates, let's pick actual Rhino objects, which exist in the file, as our endpoints. So these are actually Rhino points. And when I go back in here and again choose set one point, I can change my point type from coordinate to point object, in which case I can select this object. And the same for B, set one point, switch type to point object, and select this point. And now, since these points are tied to the Rhino point, I can actually drag them around and have it update in real time. 